We learned about functions and function composition in the last lesson. In this lesson, you learn a new technique about functions called currying. There is one more limitation to functions in functional programming along with purity. In functional programming, we only care about functions that only receive one input. We call these functions unary. Do you remember our pipe analogy for functions? Pipes can only receive one item at a time from their left side, each input to one output. But what if the logic that we wrapped as a function has two placeholders which color of that function needs to fill? One way is to wrap all parameters in an object and pass only the object to the function. That can be one way. But in this lesson, I want to show you another way which is called currying. Let's see how we can model our multi-parameter functions with unary functions by an example. Here we have a sum function. Let's make this more like, um, you know, functionally. In functional programming, we like to look at functions like algebra in math. In algebra, there is no difference between a function name and their body. You can replace them and use one in the place of the other. Basically, functions are just aliases for their body definition. So contrast to whatever we use to think, the left and right of an equal sign are the same. So left and right doesn't mean anything anymore. Before, in imperative programming, we were calling this an assignment. In functional programming though, we like to think of it as equality. Think about it for a second. If all functions are pure and predictable, and we only solve problems by composing these functions in functional programming, doesn't it mean that after all, our application is just one big formula? if we replace and expand all the functions with their definitions? For me, this is the ultimate rule of thumb for anything you create in functional programming. Functional programming is saying any algorithmic solution to a problem can be modeled by one huge formula. Rather than our previous imperative approach, which was providing a solution to a problem by updating the application state. What we try to do in functional programming is to provide a framework to break this huge formula into smaller functions. In other words, it is trying to give us tools that helps us step by step create bigger tools until we reach the solution to our problem using mainly composition. Keep this rule in mind and you will never get lost in thinking functionally. Okay, let's get back to our previous challenge. We were trying to find a way to make our non-unary function to unary ones. Do you remember when I mentioned functions themselves are values in functional programming? This is a trick we're going to use in converting our sum function here into a unary function. Here, I rewrote our sum function. The outer function in sum only receives the first parameter remembers it and returns another function that receives the second parameter and finally in the innermost part when it has all the inputs it does the calculation if our function needs more parameters we keep receiving a parameter at a time and return another function what we just did here is called carrying let's clean this up a little bit with lambda functions much better. Now our sum function is concise and look more algebraic. With our new curried functions, we can sum our numbers like this. Each pair of parentheses is to pass and fix one parameter. This trick gives us a really useful way to organize and reuse code. Basically, if I just passed only one value to my function, 
I can name the return function and reuse it. Like for example here, I call the sum with one and name the return function increment. Now we can call the increment function with a number and it returns a number with one value higher. If we call the sum function with 10, we can create a function that when it receives a number, it adds the value 10 to it. I hope you like this video and I'll see you in the next one.